It's Monday, the 7th of October. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and today we're talking about the 737NG series of aircraft and the new AD Airworthiness Directive put out by the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, effective 3 October, and the Airworthiness Directive affecting this line of aircraft is AD 2019-20-02. This is the AD about the 737 NG series of aircraft, the pickle fork, the cracks in the pickle fork assembly. And what this means is the system is working. Back in September of this year, just a month ago, 18 of these 737 NG aircraft were being converted to freighters. During this conversion, they discovered some small cracks in the pickle fork assembly, that assembly that attaches the rear spar to the center section to the fuselage of the aircraft. When the fuselage of the 737 is built in Wichita, Kansas, it's shipped to Seattle for assembly. It takes them about 10 days to get the aircraft fully assembled once they receive the fuselage. The fuselage comes from Wichita without a center section. Boeing installs the center section, which is the strongest part of the aircraft, which it transfers all the load from the wings to the fuselage, and that center section is held onto the fuselage with these pickle fork assemblies. There's a total of four pickle forks on the 737, two for the front spar and two that attach the rear spar. Here's a center section of a 737. Now this is a 737 MAX. Again, this AD has nothing to do with the MAX. Here is the center section of the wing. By the way, this center section also holds a vast amount of fuel. And there is where the pickle fork is located attaching the center section to the fuselage. Where they're finding these cracks in the assembly is the frame fittings and fail-safe straps that are part of the pickle fork assembly. The cracks they're finding are about one inch long and they're associated with the fasteners at the lower part of the assembly, which is located up in the wheel well, deep in the wheel well. So in a multi-operator message, they're explaining how to conduct this airworthiness directive and they're requiring operators of these aircraft to visually inspect for these cracks with the help of a use of a bore scope. Where's my... The bore scope is a camera mounted in, a, well, basically quarter inch fuel tubing, a long four foot section of this bent around to get in these awkward positions to, to get a view of these cracks in the airframe because in the wheel well, that wheel well is a very busy location just covered with all kinds of mechanical equipment that runs the 737 you got to get behind all that equipment to the airframe itself and find where these cracks may be located as you can see the wheel well located behind the rear spar is a very busy location full of all kinds of mechanical equipment thus requiring the bore scope to get in there to find these cracks so of the 18 737 NGs they looked at, they found three of the aircraft that had cracks. And the Airworthiness Directive stipulates that if your aircraft has more than 30,000 cycles on it, remember a cycle is a takeoff and a landing, you have to comply with this Airworthiness Directive within seven days. Once you inspect your aircraft, you have to file a report within three days at Boeing. If you discover there's no cracks with your airframe, you can carry on. But if you find cracks, that aircraft is grounded. This airworthiness directive will be a recurring AD and will be recurring every 3,500 cycles. If your airframe has less than 30,000 cycles on it, Boeing has given you, or the FAA has given those operators more time to comply with this airworthiness directive. This airworthiness directive is not an emergency AD, it's an interim AD. That means things are gonna change as needs be as we get more data from the field as to what's going on with these airplanes. So because this AD came out in such a short notice, it needed to come out in a short notice, it, it did not, it bypassed the notice of proposed rulemaking normal process that aid airworthiness directives have to go through. And by the way, this inspection should only take about one hour. 
Now typically as an operator, when you are hit with an airworthiness directive, it's on you to make your aircraft airworthy. You gotta eat the cost on that AD. Unlike in the automotive industry where you typically have a recall and the manufacturer of the car eats those costs in an airplane, once you own the airplane, you gotta eat the costs of that airworthiness directive. And it's all part of why flying is so darn expensive. If these aircraft come up with cracks, repairing those cracks can be an expensive proposition. So as we get more information, we'll let you know here on the Blanco Lirio channel. If you want to help sponsor this channel, come on over to Patreon. I've got it set up now for a monthly fee instead of per creation. $5 a month is the recommended uh, value package because if you only go for a dollar, 37 cents goes to the processing fee each month. So a $5 recommended subscription. And if I can get a handful of Patreons at that level, that will outweigh nearly 100,000 subscribers here on YouTube. So thanks for your support. We'll see you here. I also want to thank Santa Barbara Chocolate out of Santa Barbara, California for their support of the Blanco Lario channel.